Welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. Glad you could join me this morning. It is Tuesday, December the 15th, 2020. And uh, we're continuing in on our Advent devotional on the theme of joy this week. So, in the world today, as in generations past, we see many people bound by fear where uh, there's great sorrow abounding in all facets of society. We see it all over the place. But, but God has visited us in the incarnation of Emmanuel. God did this to bring us joy, a joy that is complete, not dependent upon the divergence of circumstances that we find ourselves in, Um, We find ourselves facing so many different things from day to day, but as believers, God has promised us a deep joy that um, is present within us despite our circumstances. If it's not, I think we need to look very closely at what's happening inside of our hearts. The Lord of all creation was incarnated in Jesus Christ, our Savior. And this was done because of God's great love for us. God desired to make his home within the believer, to bring us his great joy, peace, and hope. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, we read, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Now, Jesus told us in the Gospel of John that we were called out by him. We did not choose him first, but the Lord looked all the way through history. He looked right to where we are today. And he saw us, and he loved us, and he created the universe with us and all of his other children throughout history in mind, knowing full well all of the outcomes. God chose us before the foundations of the universe and he chose us and appointed us so that we might go out and bear spiritual fruit, fruit that will last. The spiritual fruit is characterized by a number of things and we see this in Galatians chapter 5 with the description of the, the characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. But first of all, The fruit of the Spirit is characterized by love. Then that is followed by joy. And as we celebrate our week of Advent, focusing on joy, it is the joy that Jesus has brought us that actually leads us to hope and, um, and strengthens us in our journey with Christ. The gift of Christmas was that God, first of all, extended his hand towards us. That while we were sinners and rebels, Jesus Christ died for us so that we could be partakers with him in the divine nature. The Apostle Peter tells us in 2 Peter 1, verses 3-5, to His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you might participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Now, I recently came across a quote that I believe to be true. I'm not sure who wrote this quote, but uh, it says this, that a godly life brings great joy. When we are living in disobedience to Christ, our joy in Him will be minimal or non-existent, depending on the depth and duration of that disobedience. That is true. You might say our greatest enjoyment of Christ can be enjoyed only in a robust state of obedience. I think that is true. This makes so much sense. For us to truly experience the joy that the Holy Spirit desires to be growing in and through our lives as a characteristic of His fruit, joy must be preceded by obedience. But this being said, Some have pursued obedience, but they pursued obedience legalistically. If we treat obedience as something we do first, and then the joy of Jesus follows, 
We have turned obedience into a work of the law. But true obedience that is, that is spoken about in the scripture that God desires is a response to the work of God's grace in our lives. It's so important for us to realize that true obedience to God cannot be forced. It must be rooted out of thankfulness and love for God. The true obedience that God desires finds its source in the love of God. And when we are filled with the love of God, and only then, it spontaneously flows out through us and returns to Him and also to others. And the result of getting this right is that our hearts will also spontaneously be overflowing with joy. Joy, obedience, and love are inseparable. Legalistic obedience does not lead to joy. It leads to sorrow and solemn sadness. Only obedience out of a heart that is filled with God's love leads to joy. This is why Jesus said in John 15, verses 9 to 11, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. I have told you this, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. You see the connection? Paul draws the connections also when he tells us in Romans 15:13, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. This, my friends, is the secret wellspring of abundant living today, and it is God's offer to all who believe in Him. I pray that we would experience the abundant joy of the Lord that comes as we pour our hearts out to Him and love Him with all that is within us. God bless you. This is Food for Thought.